back to the channel guys. Uh, we need to start working back on the Cushman here. We took uh, a video break off from working on it or two and uh, we need to start working back on it. And uh, the first thing I really want to work on is the dump bed. And I kind of want to give it some, you know what I mean? So not exactly sure how we're going to do it, but I have bought uh, something for it and uh, we're going to try to implement that in this video here. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tailgate. The reason why is right now when the bed goes all the way up, the tailgate just slams down. I don't want to do that anymore. So we're going to go ahead and remove it from the bed. All right, there we go. Tailgate is now removed. Not going to lie. I'm really loving, I'm really loving this textured uh, bed liner. It really makes it look good and uniform. So, so glad that we did that. So this piece here, we did not rapture line it. I'm glad we didn't. It's held on. It's got six, I want to say quarter 20 bolts that's holding this in, in place. It's got a uh, mount here and a mount here. Not sure if we're going to be able to use either one and not sure if we're going to need to cut anything that's on this mount right yet. The other pivot point that is uh, stock on this golf cart is right down here. Now the stock version of the Cushman had a gas strut that would attach here and attach to the piece on the bed. Now on the gas strut, what, another thing it had was a uh, metal or maybe a stainless strap and it was, it was limit the travel that the dump bed had so it wouldn't stand up vertical like it is now. Now as you can see the dump bed is pressing up against this piece down here and that's what that limiting strap would have limited it that so it wouldn't do that. Normally when the tailgate's on the tailgate is pushed up out of place and it falls. I didn't want it to do that. I think the limit strap was probably limited around this right here kind of motion here or whatever so we don't need it to articulate any more than this right here but I got something today that uh, I like to add to this unit so what I got for this golf cart I ordered on Amazon and well I've got some air shocks so I thought an air shock would be great if it'll lift up the back of a truck or if it'll lift up the back of a, a car or whatever, then it would do just fine lifting this bed here. Now I've seen other videos on YouTube and what they've done is they've used linear actuators. I just didn't want to go that route. Some of them were slow. Some of them didn't lift it up all the way. So I didn't want to go that route and I didn't want to go the manual route with the bed again. And the reason is my mom and dad, have already taken some interest into this golf cart here. They like to work around their house. They like to move dirt around, rocks around, pine straw, stuff like that. I'm not going to sell the cart right now, but if they want to carry it to their house and use it, fine, be it. You know what I mean? They can do that. Or if I need to carry something from uptown here, I can do that as well. Flip a switch and the air shock actually extend and uh, make the, the dump bed work. So that's my goal for today's video. So this is my plan. My plan is to mount the shock in this position here, have the stroke of the shock going up, have the feeding going forward at the bottom of the shock. Now, down here on the lower mounting portion of the uh, old dump bed hydraulic uh, gas hinge, you would say, uh, it's down here, it's a little bit narrow for the shock, but up here it's gonna be just fine. So. Down here on the shock itself, the mounting tab, let's see exactly how wide that mounting tab is. Um, the mounting tab is just over or just under an inch and a quarter. And the entire uh, width here of the shock, including the mount, is an inch and three quarters. So, we have an inch of three quarters here and we need to remove a half an inch there. Okay guys, so this is kind of what I'm thinking here. If I don't have to touch the Cushman mount at all, I don't have to cut it off and make a larger mount, I don't want to. Uh, the package came with two of these shocks and both of these air shocks was the same price as one gas hydraulic hinge 
that I would have to manually lift up, you know, and uh, purchase it from EasyGo or Amazon. They're all about $69. So with that being said, and this is the mount here that would go into the Cushman there, I believe this metal part right here without these two side pieces would fit. And it would. This right here, top here, is exactly one inch wide. So kind of what I'm thinking here, so this right here sleeve that's on the shock itself, it goes all the way through the top of the shock. The bushing here, the sticking out of the, the metal part here, and it goes between the metal part and the sleeve, it goes all the way through as well. So I'm thinking if I just cut that right there sleeve off and that bushing on the outside edge of this side, and on this side here, I'll be able to slide this right here portion of the shock into that factory mount. Now being that it comes with a pair of shocks and these shocks were $69, I believe, or I forgot exactly how much they were, maybe 71, 72. It comes with two of these. If I mess one up, I got another one I can try it on. I don't think it's gonna mess up. Uh, the stock gas hinge, for this bed, along with the stainless steel cable, those were almost $100 together. So this would still be, in my opinion, the better deal. And I can adjust the height of this right here, you know, at the flick of a switch. So. so here it is. We're getting the, uh, the shock cleaned up here. Once that rubber gets hot, man, it spreads everywhere on there. So. We're still going to uh, give it some paint here because we don't want this right here to rust at all. And uh, just using that old trusty Krylon three in one. All right guys, so I found, I was looking for a bolt to fit in the end of the shock here through my bolt selection. And while I was doing that, I remembered that when I took the cart apart, this is actually the shaft that fits through that connection along with this, um, this pin here, and this is the bottom portion of that gas hinge that helps supports the bed into place. So let's pull this right here off, like so. Look at that connection. That thing right there is on there, really nice and neat. And I was reading on some forums that these things are so cheap that they just break there. So. Nice. All right, that's going through there now. Let's put this uh, pin in here. All right, this rotates just fine here. That's mounted. I am so happy that this right here fit. This is the one part that I was really concerned about. Now that that's mounted, I'm extra happy. Now we need to see if this right here will bolt up to here. And let's make sure all this clears. If this doesn't clear, we're probably going to have to go and trim some of this out. And we also need to make sure that it bolts up while it's shut in place. So I looked up and uh, it was like 6.45. Uh, hardware store closes at 7. Bought another pen. And um, I think the pen from EasyGo was $17 for this. I think I paid like 4 Yep, works good. So... I'm happy about that. That's a half inch uh, pin here and three inches long. Let's make sure, I don't know if we can pull that shock up, but let's see if we can. So the shock doesn't go all the way up, but that's good. All right, so the shock is in place. Not sure if we're gonna need to cut any part of this bracket to allow room around here yet. We're probably going to have to do something. And let's see if we can push it down. No, it looks like it may have rubbed here at the very bottom. Um, uh, hard to tell. Let's get us, uh, let's get us another angle here. All right, you guys are up underneath the cart. Uh, here's the battery. There's the shock right over there. Can you see it? Let me move this over some. Can you see the shock? It's hard for me to see the camera. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the bed up and see exactly if it's hitting anywhere. I 
I don't think it's hitting anywhere, but it's very close. Let's see about it coming down. I think that looks good. I just can't get over that. That's worked out. Oh, that's nice. All right, so right now I have this uh, little airline. I think this is eighth inch airline here that comes with these uh, these kits here. And this is a Schrader valve, if you can see that right there. I got the air shock hooked up to the other end of the Schrader valve. And um, it needs just a little bit of pressure that raises up and down just fine. I don't know exactly how much pressure it needs just yet, but we'll get to that in a little bit, but here it is. One more test, guys. One more test. I'm gonna get up in here and, uh, you know, I'm a cool 300. And, uh, let's see if it'll lift me up in this rear test as well. Here it goes. I hope I don't fall out. Gonna, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't going, mm, nah, nah, it ain't going to work. So as you can see, the shock is mounted right side up now. I have the fitting in here. Uh, it's an adapter. I'll put a link in the description below if you have air shocks. And it's going from a JIC fitting into a quarter inch uh, male fitting going to a quarter inch line here. I'm going to take this bracket right here off of the bed here. Uh, it's got six quarter 20 volts in there and I'm gonna probably start notching out from here so we can try to mount it on this lower section here. If we can mount it on the lower section and it works fine then we'll keep it that way. If it doesn't work fine there we might have to move to the next section. If that don't work fine we may have to drill new holes in here. All right before we uh, clean all of this right here up I'm gonna just test fit it just to be sure that it works or not. I just don't wanna create more work for myself. So there's no air in the shocks whatsoever right now. So I'm um, gonna have to pull it down. It looks pretty decent, but I think the shock is at the compressed height right here. Um, I just got my airline hooked up to some paddle valves here and you know, the gauge left over from a long time ago. So it's working. Uh, being at the lowest height, it's, it's not sitting all the way down. I'm sure I could go up just another notch here. That's what we're gonna have to do. All right, guys, I went ahead and cut it again. And you see it's on the top notch here and it's not hitting anywhere. It is still traveling 90 degrees, so we still need a limiting strap to put on here. I'm just putting some air in it so it don't slam down. Not sure if y'all can tell, but the bed isn't hitting anywhere. Let's see if we can get the camera. See, it's not hitting there. It's not hitting down there. I'm gonna take this measurement right here between the upper pivot and the lower pivot and uh, this right here will help us determine the cable length that we need to make for the limiting strap. Now, uh, Easy Go Cushman sells a limiting strap, but I don't think I'm gonna just make one and uh, put it on here. Kind of see what we have right here. So from the center of that one to the center of this one is around 23 from the center to center. So I got the uh, the piece painted. I actually went there and kind of rounded some of those uh, those edges off there. I didn't want it just to be sharp. And this really isn't a beauty piece, so to say. Also rounded some of these edges off here. Uh, gave it a coat of paint. I think it looks pretty good. We're just gonna go ahead and stick it back on. 
All right, guys, so I went ahead and got this down off the shelf here. Um, got this little Air Max. I want to say this is a three gallon air tank. I don't believe I've ever used it. I bought it for a project a long time ago. Never got around to using it. It's got a 200 PSI pressure switch inside the tank. I got, a, I got an Air Max 400, 200 PSI compressor. I had a buddy of mine that, when I was real big into like mini trucks and stuff, he had a, a Chrysler Sebring, and um, he told me, he said, you know, after many years, the Sebring was sitting underneath it like a shed, and the rats got to underneath the car, they got to inside the car and into the engine bay, and it was kind of worth uh, worthless at that point. He was like, if you just come to the house, take anything you want to off the car, I'm scrapping it. So I was able to pull off two of the Bayer 450C uh, air compressors, um, these are used, but I went ahead and got them anyway. You never know when you can use a little small compressor like that. So we got both of those compressors. He had eight of these 3.8 SMC electric valves. When I first got them, um, they were all together in the side of a tank, and they had a, like a 13 gallon air tank. I scrapped the air tank because it started to rust up on the inside. I went ahead and uh, took all the solenoids off the top of the valves, cleaned everything up pretty good, made sure everything works. I got eight working solenoids. I got an old school CCE hydraulic switch box. That brings back some memories. But I've got different things I've collected over the years in here, like these little link bars here, shop tabs, bag brackets. I have, I'm pretty sure I have another box with some other stuff as well, but I was thinking of running an air tank in this setup, but really and truly, we don't need an air tank. And let me kind of explain to you what I'm thinking of doing with the Cushman. So this is pretty much what I'm gonna be running. I didn't show this in the box, I had it on the golf cart. This is a dual paddle valve setup with a uh, Vier uh, gauge in the middle. The gauge goes up to 160 PSI. Kind of old school. As you can see, it's I've never wired it up before. And it even has wires on the paddle valve gauges. Now, I've had this set up here in that box. I bought for a project huh, 10, 15 years ago, probably at least. But anyways, I figured why not we might use it here on the Cushman. Now, each one of these paddle valves here controls up and downward movement. So you'll have air inlet coming in to the bottom here. And once you go to raise the vehicle up or hit the switch for whatever you're operating for the air to flow into, it will flow out of here, out of this top hose, into your bag or your air shock or whatnot. Then when you go to, um, you know, take the air out of it and you want to just lay the truck out or whatever, the air actually escapes from the valve. So I thought it was pretty cool. But this valve is a little bit different as it has two wires here. Now what these wires are for is you can actually run a tankless air system in a vehicle. And that's kind of the, what I'm going for here. Since we're not gonna be worried about the bed, you know, popping up and down while we driving down the road, you know, like a, like a bed dance in mini truck. So what this does is you have these two wires here and when you hit the paddle valve up, this right here makes a connection. So it allows continuity to flow in one and out the other. So basically what I got on plan here is we're gonna run these right here, two wires. Basically we're gonna run power into one, power out of one to a relay. And then that relay is gonna be sending power uh, from the heavier gauge wire through the relay to the power and ground wire here. So we'll take the ground wire here on the compressor, run it to the grounding distribution block. We'll turn the power wire here that's gonna go to the relay. The other side of the power is going to go to the 30 amp um, reducer for this golf cart here where we'll be able to hit the paddle valve up. It's going to turn the compressor on. The compressed air is going to come through here and out into the bed here. And then we want to just uh, turn it off or whatever. We just release it. And if you want to lay the bed back down, you press down and the bed will release all the air that's into the air shock through this manual valve here. It's a simple system. It's not gonna be any kind of fancy for showing out, but this right here is rated at 200 PSI. 
And as much as it's gonna be working once every now and then, I think this is a be perfect system for the cart. So what I'm thinking about doing is using this plate here that had the stock uh, Delta Q uh, charger and everything on there. I got one of these uh, DC to DC converters now because it works up to 72 volts, 48, 60, 72, down to 12 volt. Thinking about mounting it right here and getting another one exactly like it and mounting it right here, just so we'll have enough amperage to run the compressor itself. I'm not sure, you know, if we go to use this, if we're gonna have enough to run everything at once, but you know, if, even if we do only run one uh, DC to DC converter here, we can always turn the radio off, turn the lights off or whatnot when we're using the compressor. Um, so we could do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this one here on the left hand side. And if I feel the need that we need to get another uh, DC to DC converter, well, we can and we have enough room to mount it over here as well. So what I'll do is I'll make sure to um, make a relay diagram about how I'm hooking up from the paddle valve uh, and the DC converter with the air compressor, all three together. Um, I'll be sure to put that uh, somewhere around in here. So if you think about doing something like the same thing, so you'll see exactly how I was able to wire mine up. I'm not gonna show you the entire wiring process. It just take too long. Plus uh, some of it might be kind of boring to y'all, but I, I will make a diagram. The diagrams are kind of fun to look at and I'll make sure to color code everything as well. Got the compressor, got the wiring harness, got everything wired up properly. And I just want to test the air shock that we have here to make sure it can pick me up. Now I'm 300 pounds. Um, not sure if I'd be able to haul in 300 pounds of dirt or 300 pounds of rock. But I just want to see, just in case, like say my mom goes to use this right here, would it pick it up without her having to do anything other than hit a switch? and the compressor only cuts on once the switch is engaged. So here we go. Okay, there it is. So it picks up 300 pounds like it should. This looks like a mess, guys. I know, I just wanted to test it out before, commit to it, so. That's exactly how it was working. It's pretty simple. Ever since I took it out of the box, I noticed it was a little bit of a rattling sound inside of it, and I just wanted to see exactly what it was. What I've done is I've decided to send this right here back to Amazon and to get a new one. However, this is kind of one thing I was uh, looking at. So this whole thing here doesn't even take up, you know, it takes up about half of it. So it kind of makes me wonder, is this board here on this, you know, 72 volt, 30 amp, reducer is it any different than a say a 20 amp or a 15 or a, a 25 amp we might order a couple of these and try that out but as of today uh, this this video is pretty much over with and i say it's over with because if you can see down in here there's a burnt mark right up in here and uh, with that being said i'm gonna just go ahead and send this right here back Get them to send me out another one and uh, go from there. Kind of hard to see it, but it looked like a piece of a diode that was uh, like kind of went off in there. You can kind of see in the board here, we kind of popped. And then once I took this right here apart, I said, oh, I can just cut this right here, put it back in, put it back in, and it'll fit even better on this plate here. 
and I may have to do that again. Now, this was still working just fine with that. Okay, that burnt mark and with this right here. Now, no telling how long it will work for. I just don't wanna keep something that I know something had been wrong with. But with that being said, I hate to end the video here, guys, but I just have to. Once, once I get the replacement, I can put it back in. Now, if the replacement would came in Friday, I uh, would be out of town uh, the weekend that you're seeing this. So I hate to do that, but that looks like how this build is going. You know, start at A, end at B. You think it's going to be a smooth shot, but it turns out it's all kind of squiggly lines. I've said it before. But that's what makes these builds interesting. You know, this is not your cookie cutter golf cart. It's not, you know, we've, we've, I'm not doing a thousand of these right here to sell to the public. This is mine. And, um, and I just want that right. I'd hate to mount everything on this cart. And then, you know, a month down the road, this finally, you know, bites the dust and it's done. And I'm going to take it all back apart again. So, I took a chance on this because it says 72 volts and this right here operates from 72 or 48. I have the blue ones on my other golf carts. I really like them and they've actually been working on 72 volts as well, but it's not advertised as 72 volts. So not sure what to do with that. Like I said, it still works. I'm gonna put it back together. I'm gonna send it to the company. Might take some pictures first and um, see exactly, you know, exactly once we get it, see exactly. Anyways, I'm gonna just get it replaced and go to town. Anyway guys, I'm rambling. We'll see you later. I'm sorry the video suddenly ended. Until next time guys, we'll see y'all later. Bye.